happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. So it's hard to believe that there are actually good things that happened from the global pandemic, but there actually was one big one. So if you think about how we track uh, infectious disease and, and emerging infections in the seasons, uh, it's been really difficult and not very scientific. So for example, uh, the way we first know when flu season begins is we know about when it starts, like in the fall. And as soon as people begin to start having symptoms that seem like flu, we used to just check for positive tests that showed up in hospital laboratory surveillance or commercial surveillance. So that was a lagging indicator. So people are already getting sick. We sort of identify, well, it's about time to have flu season, and then we wait until tests are positive. So that's actually not very efficient. In fact, there was a really interesting study that showed that if you looked at Google searches for people who had fever, headache, and a cough, that preceded the, the official designation of flu season by a couple of weeks. So that was even a, a little more uh, close to the leading indicator. But some of the things we've discovered is that most of these viruses are actually excreted in urine or in stool, and so that you can, through t testing wastewater, detect that. And that's what Tony Moresso and his team have done. This came out of our microbiome program. And uh, Tony Moresso and Dr. Mike Tiza have been the people who have really led the field in this. So in the spring of the pandemic, remember it started the first cases in December and January, within a couple of weeks they had identified that uh, COVID was excreted in wastewater. And by identifying that, they were some of the first in the country to be following wastewater analysis. Now they have taken it to the next step. And so, uh, because we no longer can fo follow really case, cases because no one really knows when they're, you know, people are testing at home, the only way to look at a leading indicator is to follow wastewater. And what they figured out was that if you follow wastewater uh, for COVID, it, it preceded the development of cases in, by almost two weeks. So, it is the best leading indicator for uh, infections going on in the, in the country. Now you'd think, right, that it could be used for other viruses. Well, that's exactly what they've done. And so they are leading the field in taking sort of an agnostic approach by amplifying all of the potential viruses uh, that are excreted in wastewater so they can detect pretty much a panoply of viruses that might be important for public health. So we have a, we're very lucky today. We are gonna go meet with them and see what they're doing because it is really exciting, cutting edge uh, uh, science, totally uh, applicable to current medicine and it has an impact on you and me. So let's go meet them. Let's go join them in their labs. And now the virus report with Dominique Garcia. Viral load in Lake Houston, East Houston, Port of Houston, Galena Park, and Clear Lake are all increasing at the wastewater facilities. We have areas like Cypress. Where so I like to think of uh, wastewater monitoring as the way we think of a weather report. You could wake up in the morning and, and get information about what the day's weather will be like. We're able to determine whether the virus is increasing or decreasing and how fast that increase or decrease is so that in the future we can give you a pretty good uh, estimate of, of whether or not there's going to be a lot of cases in the area. Our group noticed, uh, well a lot of people noticed right away was that this, this virus, the virus that causes COVID, uh, seems to infect cells of the gastrointestinal tract. It infects a number of different cells but in particular cells of the gastrointestinal tract and some of its predecessors also were um, able to be found in human excrement, basically human waste. We already had a developing research program where we were examining microbes and waste in Houston. Uh, we had access to facilities. We were working uh, with people at, at Houston Health to um, also uh, be able to gain access to, to wastewater material throughout the city. And so we built a program to test these samples for SARS-CoV-2, the cause of COVID. I think for public health officials, it also allows them to be able to uh, sort of assess where the risk is going and determine if they need to make certain changes to be able to prepare for 
possibly more severe um, outbreaks or waves of, of, of say, SARS-CoV-2. For example, if they need to increase uh, or inform hospitals that they might want to be on the lookout to, to increase hospital staffing, or perhaps mount a campaign for uh, raising awareness about everybody getting a booster shot or getting another vaccine. Uh, Dr. Melnick was the very first chair of what is molecular virology or the department that I'm actually a part of here at a, uh, a very young and growing Baylor College of Medicine in, in the 1960s. So he started his work on the East Coast. Uh, he recognized that um, Polio virus, which at that time was a scourge of communities and children in particular, uh, was actually present in, in wastewater. And he began to look uh, to wastewater to understand what the levels of polio virus uh, were doing in the community. Baylor has really been the scientific engine of this wastewater viral monitoring program. So here at the Center for Metagenomics and Microbiome Research, we do everything from developing these whole virome uh, preparation and sequencing assays to intaking these samples um, every day, um, extracting all of the virus genomes and then sequencing those genomes on our big sequencing machines. After that, um, we have bioinformatics scientists um, who then analyze all that data and actually can deliver the reports on the levels of all the different viruses to our public health people. I'm uh, primarily on the data analysis side, uh, so I'm in charge of preparing the report and modifying the report um, that goes out to uh, all of our public health people in Texas who then can look at these data um, to help them understand what's going on virologically in Texas. So we think it's really important to monitor the whole virome all at once because whether we like to admit it or not, the next big virus is going to come eventually. Hopefully it's later rather than sooner, but when it comes, if we have systems in place to monitor the whole virome in wastewater, we're gonna be able to detect that big virus that's here. We can see what's coming and even in the really downstream way in the, in the future, we think we can uh, help design new therapies or vaccines for viruses that we previously didn't have enough information on to design uh, rational vaccines for. Over the course of the, the investigation, we're up to nearly 500 distinct viruses that are uh, present in human wastewater that we can monitor the levels of. Uh, once we realized that this was possible, we engaged with a newly formed entity called TEFI, Texas Epidemic Public Health Institute, in response to the COVID pandemic by the te Texas legislature. The, their sort of mission or, or objective is to educate and create awareness around uh, infectious diseases so that Texas uh, is, is armed and prepared for the next sort of pandemic, but, but even beyond that, just infectious disease knowledge in general. And the other fascinating thing is that each city has a little bit of a different signature. Much like we learned everybody has a unique microbiome that is unique for them or their disease state, every city has its signature of viruses that really tells you about the story of that city. And it changes with time. And we can see that the progression can often go through different cities, almost like you can follow the wave around the state of Texas. And just being able to, to track this and, and study this in time is, is going to give us a wealth of information as to how these viruses are behaving and how we might be able to get ahead of that. We can prepare to reduce the chance of exposure by getting the corresponding vaccines and taking precautions, say by wearing a mask while attending large gatherings. Wasn't that amazing? I mean, these guys are doing fantastic work and very excited to have them here at Baylor and can't wait for the future. They're really doing fantastic work. So I want to end today with a bunch of shout outs. First of all, in recognition of becoming a certified national demonstration magnet school for 2023 through 2027, Baylor College of Medicine Academy at James D. Ryan you say independent school district. Congratulations to the James D. Ryan Middle School. The Baylor College of Medicine started this with uh, the, the independent school district of Houston, and it has been a wild success. Um, uh, they just were recognized as a nationally certified demonstration magnet school. 
Schools receiving the designation are considered magnet schools that provide high quality, innovative educational options to families and students that promote choice, diversity, and academic excellence. This is a remarkable school that we launched 10 years ago in partnership with the Houston Independent School District. They're the only school in Houston and one of only four in Texas with this prestigious designation. So congratulations to all the faculty, students, and families at the Baylor College of Medicine Academy at James D. Ryan Middle School. Also want to thank and, and congratulate Dr. Ken Maddox, Professor of Surgery at Baylor, who received the Lawrence Nicky Lifetime Achievement Award from the Texas Medical Association in recognition of his outstanding contributions to medicine through a commitment to public health. Dr. Maddox uh, trained at Baylor, has been on our faculty for more than first 50 years. He's a legend and an icon here. He was chief of staff at Bentown Hospital, and we love Dr. Maddox, so congratulations, Ken. And then finally, let's go red. Uh, Women Day. Uh, today at Baylor, we're participating in the National Wear Red Day in support of the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women campaign. People don't realize that women uh, get cardiovascular disease now uh, as much as men, and it's a leading cause of morbidity and mortality uh, in women. And so it's really important that women are being checked for all of their risk factors as well. And it's not just me who cares, it's Lily. She's got her Go Red uh, outfit today. So have a wonderful weekend and I can't wait to see you next week.